So let's go ahead and get started. The first part of this is guest speaker that we were going to have that could not make it. It's a well-known doctor around the world that loaned me his PowerPoint and said to just leave his name out of it and also a resource. Now the last page in this I put in there, but the rest of this is his PowerPoint. Lyme's disease, the lie and Lyme, from a person very familiar with the geography and the disease. Why is it called Lyme's disease? Lyme, Connecticut is the first place the disease showed up. In the summer of 75, 39 children living relatively close to one another in Lyme, Connecticut, were recognized as sharing some common symptoms consistent with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's not a disease, it's a biological weapon gone bad. Released from Plum Island Research Facility. This is what uh, an insider says and a world-renowned doctor says. And later on, I'm gonna give you more reports on what happened with these 39 children in another article. Plum Island Research Facility is one of the most guarded places on Earth, and there is a photo of that. Plum Island is a research facility. As a diagnostic facility, the PIADC scientists study more than 40 foreign animal diseases and several domestic diseases, including hog cholera and African swine flu. They run about 30,000 diagnostic tests each year. They operate biosafety level three. The facility's research program includes developing diagnostic tools and biologicals, vaccines, for foot and mouth disease and other diseases of livestock. Foot and mouth disease is extremely contagious among cloven-hooved animals and people who have come in contact with it can carry it to animals. Accidental outbreaks of the virus have caused catastrophic livestock and economic losses in many countries throughout the world. Plum Island has experienced outbreaks of its own, including one in 1978 in which the disease was released to animals outside the center. Two incidents in 2004 in which foot and mouth disease was released within the center. Actually, we did an article in 2004 on Lyme's disease, and that's one of the ones I'm going to talk about shortly. Plum Island is about 10 miles uh, offshore, and there's a map that's showing that in the handouts. Plum Island's freezers also contain samples of polio and diseases that can be transferred from animals to humans. In 91, the center's freezers were threatened following a power outage caused by a hurricane. Because federal law stipulates that live foot and mouth disease virus cannot be studied on the mainland, Plum Island is unique in that it is currently the only laboratory in the U.S. equipped with research facilities that permit the study of foot and mouth disease. And then there's a map showing the distance from Plum Island to Lyme, which is straight across 10 miles across the water. Uh, as it's named, the Island of Death is reported from an insider that they shoot anything that moves coming in or off the island. Uh, it's things or people without permission to enter or leave. A photo from a person fishing off Plum Island reported saying that they could see agents with M16 machine guns in their hands. And you can see that in the photo on the handout. So what is it? Lyme's disease is a bacterial infection caused by a pathogenic spirochetes of the genus Borrelia. The infection can occur in humans, dogs, deer, mice, and other animals. The real culprit of this is, at least in this country, Borrelia burgdorferi, the most common cause of Lyme disease in North America. It was first cultured in 1982. That was by Willie Bergdorfer. Also, the Geranii and the Alphzelii are the most common infection agents of Lyme's disease in Europe. And another species, Japonicum, are more common in Japan. As a matter of fact, the other day I just ran across, picked it up with somebody this week, 
one that was a Borrelia um, Hispanica. So it's interesting names that are coming up. Some of these are just related to the country that they find it in. The government and others hold the patents on these. These organisms are closely related and cause similar manifestations with multiple stages. An expanding rash at the site of a tick bite, fever and lymph problems, fatigue, malaise, effects of disseminated infection, including carditis. There's actually a long list of things and there's up to, depending on who's doing the research report, anywhere from 300 to 400 other diseases that have labels that you're finding that the real culprit, underlying culprit, is simply a Borrelia infestation. Lyme's disease is often difficult to diagnose because of shared manifestations with other disorders, like I was just mentioning. And it can also be refractory to treatment during late stages of the disease. It's very resistant. It is also antibiotic resistant. There's no antibiotics that you can give to fight this. It is most common in areas such as suburban regions of upstate New York and Connecticut, where large populations of deer and white-footed mice serve as the principal mammalian host and reservoirs of the infection. Where is it? Notice how it spreads from the origin. And uh, what I'm looking at is just off the tip of Long Island and spreading across the U.S., which has now affected every state in the United States. Number of cases from 1990 to 2015 of reported cases. The lie, the CDC reports 30,000 cases per year. And 2016 ups that to 300,000 cases. That's huge, which makes it the number one infectious disease in the USA. Co-infections, what is a co-infection? It means that you're contaminated at the same time as being infected by the Lyme's disease. Another thing that is misunderstood sometimes is just having symptoms that have another label, which could be identified as a um, co-infection, but actually it's just where the infestation of Borrelia settle into the body. But other things that have happened, as you can see on your handout, that get this label are Epstein-Barr, mono, herpes, one through six, Babesia, which can be very dangerous, uh, mycoplasma, which I find 20 years ago, I hardly found them in anyone. Mycoplasma infestation now, when I check people, there is no one that doesn't have it. It just depends on to what degree. Bartonella, I'm picking it up in most people as well. Rocky Mountain spotted fever and anaplasma. There are currently at least 60 strains of Lyme and they morph and get stronger due to use or overuse of antibiotics, which does not work on Lyme's. In Massachusetts, they passed a law in 2016 forcing insurance companies to cover the cost of treating Lyme disease. It was a 10-year battle to get that accomplished. How does it present itself? Each person presents differently. Common symptoms, joint pain, arthritis, brain fog, lethargy, muscle spasms, heart problems, rib and chest problems, irritability, memory problems, weight gain, thyroid problems, and nerve pain, neuralgia type pain also. Treatment, lots of science behind these treatments. The Borilogen, which has uh, been clinical proof in studies that have been done, more Lyme die off than standard medicine. But here's the deal, standard medicine, doesn't really have anything effective. So in Western Standard Medicine, you're not getting results. And I'm getting this from doctors. There is one doctor that we worked with in a study back around 2004. And Lyme's cases, they would refer them to him. He had over a thousand Lyme's cases. That would, he was trying everything he could. And the study led to including natural things and integrative things because everything standard medicine had to throw at it wasn't getting any results. And out of his thousand cases, he had too large a percentage that people were eventually dying. 
So there are a number of things that are available through the King Institute, the Better Health Center, Zyto and Frequency Pulse Technology, TKM. Even before 2004, TKM alone has worked on Lyme's disease and totally eradicated it. Without TKM, this is again the doctor's uh, PowerPoint here, without TKM I would not be here today after suffering from Lyme's disease for years. Let me give you another one. There was just an example, there's so many, a pharmaceutical rep. Now a pharmaceutical rep knows about pharmaceuticals, they're the ones that market them to the doctors. And the doctors know about many pharmaceuticals because of what the pharmaceutical rep gives them and the pamphlets and free samples. So that was their career for many, many years. And they came down with lots of symptoms. It took years to actually get diagnosed with Lyme's. Then they were treated with everything that they could from their profession in the pharmaceuticals and their ties with the Western medical to no avail. Uh, they finally found out about us and came and within a year, less than a year, and they lived out of state so they came periodically and followed the protocol. And we eradicated it in her despite her disbelief that it could even possibly happen but was trying anything she could, eradicated in her in less than a year. So the next slide, common factors, childhood trauma, exposure to mold, which is so much these days, Lyme prone area, that means New England area, Michigan, uh, parent or partner infected with Lyme's, bitten by a tick. Yes, you can be contagious from one person to another. And yes, it does travel from partner to partner and the mother can pass toxic load to the baby. So why the lie? The liability to the patent holders is enormous. Remember the government holds it. Patent holders are the U.S. government and large pharma. Liability could be larger than the national debt, at least hundreds of billions of dollars. And a note here says, Dr. King, every single case of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia has tested positive for Lyme's disease. Everyone. Uh, we also find similar stories here, many things. May I include, now that we're finding it the same with ALS. Common treatment. Every person we have helped with Lyme's, and there are dozens now, have spent tens of thousands of dollars just told by doctors they have no idea. So they spend all that money and the conclusion is we have no idea. One couple that, uh, again the doctor that wrote this, ministers to, to whose daughter is now healed, spent 700000 on doctors and treatments with little to no help. One couple spent a fortune with testing from the University of Michigan and were told, it's all in your daughter's head. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's so sad. It's, it's really not sad. I've said that for many years. It's really sick and it's, it's wrong to the worst degree. You know, there's a lot of things in this country that in some ways are getting turned upside down that need to be turned upside down. And this is one of them, the way that we have approached uh, medical issues. And I will say that emergency medicine is one of the things where Western medicine excels. But for chronic disease, there's a reason that the United States ranks number 37 in the world. So the doctor said, typically people will spend $40,000 to $100,000 just to get a diagnosis and then find out that there are no medical treatments that cure Lyme. Well, for a fraction of the lowest of that, we can actually detect it and treat it and rid you of it. And 2018 will be the worst year for Lyme yet. They calculate that number by the number of mites, ticks, and rodents infected that are testing positive. So again, 2018, Lyme's is to be the number one 
infectious disease in this country. That's only a couple of months away. It's essentially that now. It just will be officially that by the CDC in 2018. So what are the myths? I can only get Lyme from a tick bite. Not true. Spiders, ticks, mosquitoes, etc. All biting insects can pass Lyme or co-infections of Lyme. All rodents have tested positive for Lyme and co-infections. All rodents. I can't have Lyme. I didn't have the red bullseye on my body. You know, the classic thing you find that the doctors talk and ask about and that you find online uh, when you search online about it. You don't have to have that. It's not true. Less than 20% of people infected with Lyme ever show this symptom. I actually had Lyme back in the uh, late 90s. And I got mine from a spider bite, was my determination. And it did not have the bullseye or anything else. And not long after that, a uh, few months, I started getting the symptoms. And I only used TKM and totally resolved it all. Here's another one. Lyme is not infectious. Hmm, not true. It is now the number one infectious disease in the USA. Another one. My doctor said I tested negative for Lyme, so I can't have it. Not true. Most doctors test with old, antiquated methods. Many strains are undetected by old tests. So, yes, but here's the other side. You could have a level of the classic Borrelia burgdorferi, and it, you may not pick it up in the standard medical test. You may have to wait until you're much, much more infected. And if I had time, I would give you case studies of that, or case stories. Here's another one. Lyme is only in the Northeast. Not true. Every state now has Lyme's disease. As a matter of fact, it's found in every continent and most countries around the world. Antibiotics can kill Lyme in eight weeks. Absolutely not true. Lyme has morphed into many different versions. The CDC is recommending not using antibiotics on many previously recommended diseases. Actually, it is much harder to cure people with Lyme's if they have taken antibiotics. Antibiotics may be effective if the disease is caught in the first 72 hours after infection. And come on, what's the likelihood of that? There are many additional myths, too many to list here. So let's go on to the next thing. What are the effective therapies? Well, a testing that we do here is Zyto testing for the frequencies. It's not a quantitative, so it can detect actually smaller infestations of Lyme's than what can be detected by any standardized medical test. And I'm not talking about any little Zyto. This is the Zyto Elite that has been customized and also other software that's been developed to actually integrate into this to do more intense testing by some other world-renowned integrated medical doctors. Treatment, you can also treat with Zyto, making uh, bacteria and microbe frequencies. There are other things that have been adding in that don't come with the standard Zyto that we can uh, do treatments with. You can also treat with TKM. These things individually have been effective all by themselves, but you couple them together, really it doesn't stand a chance. Another treatment, pulse frequencies. It's by Pulse Technologies. We do a special amplification. So again, we're not using just what the technology and the standard protocol is. We are actually amplifying this versus the library frequencies for Lyme's. And this is directly from uh, Rife Technology using the latest information to know the amplification that needs to be done to penetrate the body to affect bone and deep tissues and all these other things so that when you do this, it is actually effective. Also, Cemento and Berylogen. Berylogen's already been mentioned and we'll talk more about Cemento. Let's go to some more information. In your handouts, we did a lecture actually about a year ago where you had three pages in your handouts. 
I'm just going to touch on this and some of the others because I don't have time to go through all of these. There's a lot of information, and even if I did go through all these, there's so much more that we have on our website and have available for you. So I'm going to mention about part of this one. Tiny parasites normally spread by ticks and are increasingly sneaking into the U.S. blood supply. Babesia, we had already mentioned, is a blood-loving parasite that rarely kills but can make life miserable. May I say that when I was uh, originally self-diagnosed and then uh, got that confirmed and sent studies off to Europe to get extra confirmation with uh, the fourth stage metastasized melanoma cancer, that in the latter stages of that, before total recovery, I was having horrible pain in my knees and in my ankles that felt similar to the cancer area pains that I was having in bone because it had spread into my skull, the cancer into my femur, my spleen, and my lymph system. My kidneys were loaded up. And I was having this horrible pain spreading into other areas and joints. I thought it was the spreading of the cancer until I came and retested again. What it actually was, because my system was down and vulnerable during that time, I got an infestation of Babesia. It was not the cancer that was in the knees and the ankles that was causing 24-hour horrible pain. So Babesia is a nasty little critter that you don't want, and it can get in the brain. Many people don't even have symptoms after an infection, although it's not harmless. Babesiosis, the disease caused by Babesia, can be lethal to those with weak immune systems, among others who frequently get blood transfusions. That's not going to be me. I don't believe in it. What's more, there's no way of knowing how many infected people are donating blood, according to a major blood donation center. Plus, there's no large-scale U.S. government-approved way to test for Babesia in the 15.7 million blood donations transfused into 5 million Americans every year. Those are not only Babesia-related issues troubling the FDA, which oversees the U.S. blood industry. Tick-borne Babesiosis infections are on the rise and in lockstep so are those linked to blood transfusions. Don't forget about this concerning limes. We've already talked about transferring from one person to another. What if you're just taking the blood from one person to another? Yes, you will get it. Even though it's commonly noted as rare, babesiosis is the pathogen most often spread by blood transfusions, according to the reports in the New England Medical Journal. But we also find, along with the other research, that it's passed from person to person. So it's going to give you a lot more information on that, and photos and pictures and studies, other things that are being misdiagnosed as these infestations, Lyme, Babesia, and the other related. Other things that are happening, such as viruses, the JC virus, the BK virus, rubella, measles, and the HIV, HTLV1, and HTLV2. So it just goes on and on and on and how this spreads and has actually officially become a pandemic. Now what uh, I was talking about earlier is we have these journals that were printed and they have ceased now, but what we did is we took all of the journals, all of the issues, and we put them on our website free for you to find. So I'm letting you know that this is issue number one, and that's where the article begins. This is uh, from 2004, it says Lyme's disease, new epidemic. In 2004, it's called new epidemic masquerading as severe illnesses. And that was a statement from Dr. William Lee Cowden. And if you'll notice, all of this entire column is a summary of his credentials. 
So he's not the doc down the street. Lyme's disease. In 1982, which we mentioned earlier, Willie Dor Dorfer, Bergdorfer <laughs> isolated from a midgut of a deer ticks a Borrelia spirochete bacteria which reacted with the immune serum from Lyme's patients. So what did he do? In 82, Willie Bergdorfer proved that the infectious ideology of Lyme's disease. Subsequently, researchers have concluded that Borrelia and several co-infections like Babesia, Bartonella, Erglesia, and also transmitted by mosquitoes and certain other biting insects, as well as blood transfusions, sexual intercourse, drinking unpasteurized, contaminated milk from humans, cows, goats, and other animals, and transplacental transfer from mother to fetus. So Lyme Borreliosis has been reported in patients on all six continents and has reached epidemic levels in many countries. It comes under different strains of Borrelia, but it is an infestation that has the same type of symptoms and has the same resistance to medical treatments. In 2004, it was said that it estimates to affect more than 15% of the world population. That was in 2004. Now this has exponentially grown since then. What we're finding, I, let me just shortcut this. In our studies and testing with people, because we do standard testing with many things like uh, cancer frequencies, um, viruses, bacterial infestations, other things, and we're finding on a frequency level for stressors for the body that most people tested have some level of these infections or co-infections. Therefore, they need to be addressed. Many times we find that as the culprit of why they come, whether it's been, they've been giving labels of diseases by other people or not. Let me skip down to some other parts. A new exhaustive literature search has shown that Lyme borreliosis causes, mimics, or contributes to more than 300 medical conditions. Some conditions included in this list are various allergic conditions. Allergies are just off the scale these days. They can be caused by the sensitivities of a Borrelia infestation. Also, Alzheimer's, ADD, ADHD, autism, Crohn's, MS, ALS, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, Bipolar, TMJ disease, as simple as TMJ, you call it a disorder, but it's a disease when you're finding out that there's an infestation of Borrelia. Trigeminal, trigeminal neuropathy, to where you get paralysis, facial paralysis. Irritable bowel, you're hearing that all over the place these days. Fibromyalgia, the same thing. And chronic fatigue syndrome, one study showed 90% of chronic fatigue syndrome patients were Borrelia positive. It has been estimated that less than 25% of Lyme's patients have ever had a bullseye. The other one said less than 20. In my experience of what I pick up with people, because we pick up much more minute cases rather than these full blown, is it's far less percentage of that. Many studies show that standard antibiotics are ineffective for eradicating either Borrelia or some of the other co-infecting microbes in second stage or third stage Lyme's disease because the microbes form cysts and spores resistant to the antibiotics is an additional reason. The adult microbes are reproduced from the spores and cysts once antibiotics are stopped. A pilot study on advanced stage Lyme patients in Dallas have shown dramatic favorable results using a special form of Peruvian's cat claw bark along with dietary changes and cemento and lifestyle modifications, some supportive nutrients and TKM as a supportive treatment. 
Additional details of this pilot study and related information will be coming in Chemo Journal issues, which means the next issue, issue number two. Again, in the front of that, it says Lyme's disease part two. The new epidemic masquerading as several illnesses. There is hope for advanced Lyme's disease because I actually was also involved back in that time period with a study with that neurologist that specialized in Lyme's disease cases. He had over a thousand, as I mentioned earlier. And the study that we had with 30 people, he actually pulled some of the worst cases that he had. So these were critical. You know, you, you'd say chronic, but there are people that die from this disease. And these people were in excruciating pain and very disabled and hardly able to move around, very difficult to go up any steps. So we worked with some of the worst ones. You're going to find out about that study if you'll read this article. So just go online to our website, and it will give you uh, information. There are several pages that talk about it and talk about it from the perspective, a uh, large part of that is written by Dr. William Lee Cowden. The spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi is a tick-borne parasite whose normal reservoir is a variety of small mammals. Although infection of these natural hosts does not lead to disease, the infection of humans can result in Lyme's disease as a consequence of the human immunopathology response to Borrelia burgdorferi and other strains. So Borrelia is not classified as either gram-positive or gram-negative. Lyme's is called the great imitator because its symptoms mimic many other diseases. And we mentioned earlier that there were almost 60 strains of Borrelia. We used to think 20 and we used to think 40, then we used to think 50. So who, who knows how many there are? And that's just of the Borrelia. That's not all the strains of Babesia, Bartonella, and the other things that are mimicking this. It can affect any organ of the body, including the brain and nervous system, muscles, joints, and the heart. So where the infestation is or is the most often can give you labels of diseases because of where the location is, when it can simply just be the infestation of Borrelia. If untreated, Lyme's disease eventually spreads to the brain, heart, and joints, where it can do severe damage. If it's not properly and aggressively treated, it can become chronic to critical and can cause death later on. Borrelia burgdorferi, the classic Lyme's label, that bacteria are not the only bacteria that ticks carry, as we've already mentioned. They carry a variety of them. There are at least 16 of the 40 to 60 strains, depending on which school of thought you're in, of Borrelia that have shown to cause infection and in infestation that are exactly like Lyme's, exactly like the uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. So even though they come up under another name, they look and act the same in symptoms of the body. And without testing, proper testing, you cannot know what strain of Borrelia caused the infection. And if you don't know what strain it is, how are you going to get it into control and rid yourself of it? Success for these issues has been and are still accomplished by simply and naturally helping the immune system function properly in an enhanced way. Although it does take the knowledge and effective methods we use to accomplish this goal. I know we're not the only ones, there's others out there, but standardly, it's not so. I think I have another example of that in a natural way. So the medical way has been stated over and over by medical doctors, by integrated medical doctors, and by other medical researchers talking about what's available in Western medical science. Uh, but let me give you another example. Just this week, I got another one. So this one I thought I would bring. 
I won't show you the label, but I'll tell you what it says. It says Lyme's disease. Now this is from a natural uh, product company. And it goes on and with a big title and a tick there and gives you a protocol. And they even have a product called Lyme D. Well, a person would think that that would be something that would kill limes. But really, all of these things that they're naming are only to help some symptoms, and it does not destroy limes. You will not get a cure. For instance, in their own words, see, it's just like the commercials for drugs. You see somebody laughing or having fun, and they're in a green pasture, and the majority of people will jump on board, although they're telling you that if you got a hangnail and you take this drug, it might give you terrible problems or death in five to 20 different ways, but it might help your hangnail. So what is the natural medicine doing here? It tells you, for temporary relief, for temporary relief of aches and pains, joints and muscles as a consequence of Lyme's disease. Doesn't say that it treats it, doesn't say that it eradicates it, doesn't say that it kills it. It says temporary relief of symptoms. So if it works, it's giving, it's like taking an aspirin for a headache that doesn't address the reason for the pain one iota. It makes you feel better for a while. We hope it's not a brain tumor that's causing a headache. Although it does take the knowledge and effective methods we use to accomplish this goal, just like we accomplish for many people with other difficult illnesses. This even applies to autoimmune disorders where the immune system is typically suppressed on purpose by the medical community or advised to not stimulate whatsoever. Learn more about identifying symptoms, detecting culprits, bacteria, viruses, and more plus how to rid these invaders from the body in effective and very specific targeted natural ways with consistent results. So we're talking about what do you do for everything I've discussed? And I have stuck to the PowerPoint and reading these things because if I was to talk about this on my own, we'd be here all day today, tomorrow, and, and you'd, somebody would have to come drag me away. So I have to stick to this because I could just go on and on about this. We can also help people where you are without travel. It, it, it limits some aspects, but we have been very effective in doing so. Most of the time, but there are certain requirements. What are the requirements for people that need testing and help for these disorders or finding out if these disorders even exist in them? How about this one? How about finding out if you have the potential of a low infestation that you need to get rid of before you actually have the signs and symptoms and the suffering? I prefer that. That's called preventative medicine. So the requirements for long distance testing and treatment is high speed internet, a PC, because Apple computers will not be compatible with what we need to do and to purchase a Zyto hand cradle. And then we can test and treat. We will send you what you need. So can we talk about that for a moment? For instance, we have the Zyto, which has the strains of Borrelia in it, has the strains of Bartonella, has the strains of the other infections and co-infections and problems that we can detect. We also have other tests that we can do here if you're here in person. The cost for this is the same in person as it is long distance. Treatments, we can do everything except we can't do the pulse technology treatment if you're not here because it takes being in person. Although if a person was serious or you know someone in the area, those are not real expensive. Uh, you can get a unit for probably $2,000 without the extra bills and bells and whistles and just use the basics and then we tell you how to calculate, amp it up, and provide you the frequencies to use that appropriately, not going by the standard library. 
The other thing you're missing if you don't know it already is TKM. So obviously we can't do TKM long distance and these other things, but we have been able to treat in every other way. So something I wanted to mention in that to give people help because uh, I'll put it this way, all of our costs for these treatments and testing, first off, where can you find that out there? So the people that we know that are somewhere comparative in the market to the testing and have the equipment, we stay below what they charge. Because one of the things we want to do is take excuses away from people. And what a common excuse no matter what the financial ability is for a person, is finances. So we have a coupon here for 50% off. And these are also in your PDFs, so you have those. What it is is 50% off of comprehensive health scan. That's everything you'll need. There is nothing added that you'll need to test with. Comprehensive elite scan, and it says includes any additional related testing at the time. So that normal cost is 580, so this is a $290 coupon. It expires December 16th of this year. If you just book, you don't have to be tested and treated by then. If you just book it by then, that's fine. So we have these free available, and here's what else. Yes, you can print out more of these to hand to family or people you know, especially people that obviously have the need because there are many people that want to get tested just to see where they're at as a preventative medicine. And then there are the others who are suffering. Now something else. Let's say you get tested. We treat you. The Lyme's, the uh, Borrelia, the Bertinella, the Babesia, any or all of those and co-infections exist or eradicated. What if it was infestation in the brain and we have brain damage? A lot of that can be helped by doing away with the infestation. You'll see symptoms improve. But brain damage physically is brain damage. So if we have TKM, we can help recover that. We also have what many people don't know, and we don't even advertise this on our website, some of the latest, most advanced treatment and testing and analysis for the brain. It is clear mind brain mapping. So some people have heard of brain mapping for many years. This is, uh, we have some people that are tested and the test results are requested and sent back to their neurologist who would do a standard EEG. So this is actually giving you information that a standard EEG would not give you, although you're using a standard EEG cap, and you're doing brain mapping. So what it's doing, well, I can have an example over here of a test that was done prior. Uh, now this is what the professional gets. The person that's tested will get a two-page summary because they wouldn't understand the rest of it anyway. And I know you can't see this well, <clears throat> but I'll help you. It gives you the details and the mapping on one of them saying the global underactive, global inhibited, global over arousal, and it's measuring EEG and CEC symptoms. And then it gives you lots of details below there, but it's gonna give you how they rate, low, moderate, or high. Then it's gonna give you executive processing, memory processing, math comprehension, and again, all of these are going to include the CEC and EEG with a large number of groups of details down below that are quite revealing to a person. Verbal processing, visual processing, and reading comprehension. It goes on to theta-beta ratios, which gives you this. You're tested with eyes open and eyes closed gives you the severe, moderate, and normal readings of these, of the norms of delta, theta, alpha, and beta in each section of the brain, the frontal, central, perineal, the occipital, and what it's doing after that is getting into a lot of fine details of what these are. In each section of the brain, how they're functioning, 
and bilateral how they're functioning. And this goes page by page, there's about 20 pages, but it's summarized for something very, very simple for you. So uh, let me put it in a, a simplified nutshell. We find out how the brain is functioning or not functioning and what areas of the brain need the priority most help. And what we'll do is afterwards we treat that area of the brain and it's recommended anywhere from 10 to 20 treatments. If there's one area that's needing help, it may be up to 20. If there's more than one area, it's usually split to 10 treatments in one area and 10 treatments in the other area. This is going to involve glasses that have interaction with light. It will involve visual, audio, and what you're going to do is it's going to send signals with probes to that part of the brain. No risk, very non-invasive. This is actually done on many, many young children with brain disorders as well due to vaccinations and other problems, even head trauma. So anything that deals with the impairment of brain function. You know what? I even did this when I was going through the cancer recovery protocol because guess what's connected to every organ and system in your entire body? Your brain. Guess what helps regulate your hormones, your immune system, and everything else in the body? Your brain. So I worked with getting my brain to function better so that my immune system, hormones, and everything else could function better and regulate it to fight the cancer. And it was phenomenal. Well, I'm here instead of being under the dirt. Another smaller nutshell to put this in is when you're doing these probes, it's working with visual, audio, and everything else to help your neural pathways rebuild. And it's sending signals, and it will detect. And we get all kinds of graphs and readouts on this on the software that's very, very expensive. And we have a separate room set aside for that. And what that will do is tell us how each part is happening and it will send signals when the signal doesn't go through it encourages the body to rebuild those pathways so your brain is actually rebuilding the pathways that have been impaired or destroyed it's absolutely phenomenal work so we have a 50 percent off for that as well our prices for that are under the market for that you can find brain mapping out there, clear mind brain mapping. But you're accomplishing a lot. Uh, there's the brain mapping, there's the neuro integrator, there's the neuro mapping and the EEG brain mapping, and then the uh, reconstructing of the brain essentially so it can function right. What we do here with the Zyto is we design a program with herbs and tinctures and frequency medicine. If need be, we incorporate other things for an individual according to what they test with to get the absolute best results. Another product that we use with limes is called Cemento. That was a product developed with some other doctors uh, along with Dr. William Lee Cowden specifically after that research study for limes. And it has been very, very effective. If you have any more questions about this, let us know. But this concludes the lecture. We invite you to go on our website and read additional information in the Kima journals and other articles that we have available on the website. And contact us with uh, your questions and any need for help. We hope to see you in the next lecture. God bless you.